Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. You can see that I've got the beautiful sunlight on my face and we're really enjoying glorious weather here in Hong Kong. So today I'm going to be talking about the difference between inductive learning and deductive learning. So if you're interested in finding out the difference and the nuances between the two different learning approaches, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the difference between inductive teaching and learning and deductive teaching and learning. And I'm just going to make myself a little bit smaller. Okay, so I've created this graphic to try and help us unpack the difference between inductive learning and deductive learning. So you can see on the left hand side of the diagram here that we really want to encourage our students to pattern seek when they're in the inductive learning environment. Now, the inductive learning environment is very much student centered. So we start off with specific examples, which you can see in this upside down triangle triangle. So we give students specific examples and then they look at patterns across those examples and then they generalize. So we allow our students to actually articulate and communicate their understandings and their generalizations. Now, the other type of learning is deductive learning, which I've got on the right side of the diagram here. And deductive learning is pretty much the opposite way around. So it's very much teacher centered. And we start with the generalization. So we give our students the generalization or in mathematics, maybe it's the formula. And then through direct instruction, we show a few examples and then students go and practice those specific examples. Now, the deductive learning approach is probably what we're all used to. It's what traditionally is the method that's been adopted when it comes to either mathematics learning or any other learning. But we really want to try and encourage our students to pattern seek. So David Souza wrote this wonderful book called How the Brain Learns Mathematics. And he says that we're born with this innate quality to be able to pattern seek. And I think for all discipline areas, we should be giving our students those opportunities to generalize, to communicate their deep conceptual understanding. Now, in a concept-based teaching and learning framework, we want to try and encourage inductive learning as much as possible. So when we actually design learning experiences, we want to expose students to specific examples and then allow them to generalize uh, the great John Mason, a wonderful mathematician and researcher, has a beautiful quote about helping students to generalize. And his lovely quote is, a lesson without the opportunity for learners to generalize is not a mathematics lesson. And I would even remove that word mathematics. And I would say that a lesson without the opportunity for learners to generalize is not a lesson. We want to immerse our students in a constructivist environment so that they are forming and constructing their own understandings based on the specific examples that we provide to them. And that enables our students to be able to apply and transfer their understanding to lots of different situations. So I hope that you found this little video useful in terms of distinguishing the difference between inductive learning and deductive learning. A big shout out to Jennifer Gonzalez from the Cult of Pedagogy. And she's got this great video on inductive learning, an example from the science classroom and also from the language classroom of how we can actually use the inductive learning approach. And the last thing that I want to mention is that the inductive learning approach is based on the work of Hilda Tabba from the 1960s, and that we really want to try and encourage an inductive learning environment with our students. So thank you so much for joining me this week, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.